measured the ceiling height, but it didn't measure the doorway. Now, when I first came to this property, they were using pumps on the shower, and I was going to reuse those pumps in a different position, but the more I looked at it, and the more I looked at the setup upstairs, they got big old tanks rusting away in the loft, and I thought, let's take those out, let's put them in a nice, modern, unvented cylinder, which would give them mains pressure, give them much more in the way of shower pressure and flow rate and really speaking without the pumps in the way nothing to break down once this is installed they've got mains pressure at all their taps now that's got advantages because they can get rid of all that plumbing in the loft if they want to use that loft space for habitation if they want to put a room up there then it means they haven't got to start moving tanks around all that can go and it really is the modern way of plumbing Don't forget they do different sizes, different shapes. You can also get one to go in the eaves cupboard, by the way. If you've got a loft conversion and you want a cylinder, you can pop one in that eaves cupboard, which is absolutely brilliant. And you can also get solar cylinders. So now I'm gonna enjoy going upstairs, having a look at the shower valves and everything else and seeing just how much more pressure they've got because that really is the bit where it delights the customer. My screw's going to go and then measure the mirror and make sure it's basically going to overlap at the bottom by one tile and 13 and a half here from that same point 13 and a half it's the same thing it's one tile right can we get a bit of tape have we got any masking tape This is a new waste fitting from Abacus, and I've not actually seen one of these before. I've never fitted one, but what they do is they're quite clever, really, because you can use them on slotted basins, so 
In this case, we've got an overflow, so we've got a slot there. So where you would use a slotted waste, you can use these, and you can also use them on unslotted waste. So if you understand, that's a, a, a basin without an overflow there. So the reason that works is because those two parts there are held together by a long screw that goes down through the middle. So if you didn't have an overflow, it would just go straight down through there and into there. The only thing is that it's slightly different. If you were doing this with a, a, an ordinary basin waste that was one piece, your seal would be made first at the top and then once you were through there, you would hope that it would be made at the bottom. But with this one, we've got a nice squashy washer there and we put it through and that, some people silicone those up Quite honestly, what I normally do is just feel it, test it, and think, okay, that's all right. And the only problem with that leaking would be that as you filled the basin up and as you were using it, you would see the water just trickling away very, very slightly. It, it wouldn't leak as such, so it would just let by. But I think that is absolutely fine. But if it isn't on your particular basin, you can just run a bead of silicone under there before you start. So on the other side, we've got this clear plastic washer that fits in there and that goes on the underside of the basin. Now you've got to remember that these come out of the kiln and they don't always come out dead straight. This, this one is good but if you buy a cheaper basin sometimes you find that they don't reject so many. That's why they're cheap because they don't put the hammer through very much at all but if it is distorted you can see that straight away on the underside of it and in those cases you might need to put a bit of extra silicon on or something. There's also a slip washer with this, which can go on the underside of the basin, but I'm not sure I'm gonna need it. I'm gonna just try this once because those hard polythene washers, sometimes they don't do you any good. We've got a very nice fit there. And just make sure it's central and I can crank it up with that screw and I can feel it. A lot of plumbing is about the feel. You kind of know when to tighten things up and you just feel them just squashing up on the washer. And one of the problems, I just mentioned this, one of the problems we're using silicon on fittings, waste fittings and things like that is once you put silicon on that rubber, you're kind of lubricating it. And that means that as you tighten up, the rubber squeezes out from underneath whatever it's in. So it doesn't always do a lot of good. And as a plumber, I hate going to jobs where people have just been too generous with that silicone and you go there and they've just smeared it all around everything. And if you ever need to take things apart, then it makes it difficult. Having said that, a little tip for you, if you do need to take a basin waste apart that's been siliconed in, WD-40. Just spray it all the way around the waste Go and have a cup of tea, come back, and you'll find that that silicone will have almost completely dissolved. It's really amazing what it can do. The downside of it is that once you've done that, once you put the silicone in, if you're going to remake the waste joint and you want to use more silicone, you've got to clean that WD-40 off there completely before you can do anything else. And I use methylated spirits for doing that, but you, if you leave even the slightest trace of WD-40 on there, the silicone won't seal so i reckon that's good i'm just feeling it and i'm feeling that's nice the reason we've done it like this is because we want to dummy up the underside of here with the waste so that we can check the height to get us into those viega traps there so there's a bit of adjustment on those we can go up or down by about two inches i think or 50 millimeters so it's a fair amount of leeway on there but we need to get it there or thereabouts so what we do is we go for the midway option on it. So we've got to find those pipes, Juby. Now, the thing that I really like about these basically, first thing is the way they've designed this overcomes an age old problem. And that is if you use a conventional trap and then you try to fit the furniture underneath, it fouls the drawer. Half your cabinet is taken up by the trap and the waste pipe, so that's no good. So these ones come straight out, very neat, off the bottom of the basin, 
and they go into this wall trap here, which is a piece of genius because not only does that hide that trap away within the wall, it's also removable. So we can take the whole thing out just by turning it round. Sorry, I did this before and this, okay, let me just do that. Do you know what, it just came out, didn't it? As easily as anything, okay, right. So it's all, it's removable. So the whole thing can be cleaned. If you've got any hairs in there or anything like that, you want to clean the thing out. It's very easy to clean. Pop it back in, press it down into place. Once you get it right, lock it back under. There's a little tab there for it to lock under. Now this part here can then adjust up and down so that it gives you a bit of wiggle room. You always need wiggle room when you're a plumber because if you were a precision engineer, you'd be working for British Aerospace or someone like that. So you, you need to just get that measurement as good as you can. But what I do is let's put this in the middle and then that way, when we put the base on the wall, we've got room to just drop that down a little bit or raise it up a bit if we need to, but it's more likely we're gonna drop it down and that will give us the fall on that waste pipe because it's really annoying. The number of jobs I've been to in the past where the waste pipe is going slightly uphill, and people say to me, my basin's not draining away very well. And I say, well, probably never will, quite honestly. So water runs downhill, we all know that. And that allows you to do that a bit of adjustment. So for me, that is one of the absolute joys of doing this job. If we were using this as our, yeah, line, you, we're not. You brought it up, we're doing a 50. One. All right, so 220. Right in the middle, as you luck. Sitting just above it, so. Now these hole saws, as I've said before on our channel i got these for around about 10 quid for 10 different sizes of hole saw from ebay we're going to put the link down in the description below and they're diamonds there's a fair amount of diamond on there but i know what's going to happen someone's going to get them and they're going to use them and they're going to say these are absolute rubbish these wouldn't cut their way through whatever you know butter so the thing with all diamonds, and this doesn't apply to cheap diamonds, it applies to all diamond hole saws, everything you're using, the diamond discs for angle grinders, all that kind of thing, is that they glaze over. If you're going through hard material all the time, in the end that resin just glazes over, and if you run your fingernail around the edge of it, you can't feel much in the way of diamond. So what you need to do, is a little trick that I'm just gonna show you now. Follow me. So, we've been going through hard material, porcelain. I've done about four holes with this saw now, and it feels pretty glazed over. So what I do is I find a bit of brick. This is a reasonably soft brick. And what we're gonna do with that soft brick is we're just gonna take the diamond hole saw. Now, if you see a lot of dust coming up, that's a good sign. That means it's abrasive material that's what we want anything soft concrete soft brick anything that's a little bit soft don't make it too hot you can use a bit of water if you want on it but now that's worn away that little bit of resin and it's exposed a bit of fresh diamond so having done that it should be ready for another two or three holes before i need to do that again so we still want plenty of water that's the secret because we want to keep this diamond cool. So keep flooding water onto whatever you're cutting. You can hear straight away the noise of that diamond gritting. Do you hear the cut, the difference in the cut? So that'll get through in no time now. As I say, I could do another couple of holes with this and then maybe I'll go and run it through the abrasive again. So there you are, don't throw those diamonds away. Just do that, soft material. It, it, it wears the diamond resin away that holds the diamond bits faster. But if you're going through hard material, engineering brick, 
or anything like this porcelain, you do need to stop it glazing over every so often. the silicon along the back. Sometimes I just get a little rush of blood and I just want to do something practical. It might, might not be the right thing, but I just... It won't be, will it? <laughs> it's a cameraman's arm. It's a pub, isn't it? Sorry? It's a pub, a cameraman's arm. Okay. Hey. Cameraman's arms, that's oh, right. the cameraman's arm should never appear in the shot. Okay, so I'm fitting this towel rail now and I've come up against a little problem. The tiler has done a fantastic job. I really love what he's achieved here. But I put these connections for this towel rail in the wall. So the pipes come up and there's a back plate elbow and those are set in the wall. I chase the wall out to put them in. And I measure them all out carefully and they're fine. But actually, because of the way that he's done the tiling, sort of evening the wall out, if, if you like dubbing the tiles out slightly, these are now too deep in the wall. And when I put the tail in, it brings this valve so close to the wall that it's out of line with the, the tail rail. So I could have just put a piece of pipe in there, put an offset on the pipe just to bring it out, but that's ugly really to do that. So what I've needed to do is I needed to bring that valve out, further out from the wall, here, so that I can connect to the rail. So what I'm doing, how I'm achieving that, is I'm actually putting in a little, what we call an M and F. It's like a tap extender. And if I pop a fiber washer in the bottom of there, and I also put one in there, and then I screw that into there. I'm gonna tape that up as well. I'm not just gonna rely on those fiber washers, but they will work. They will do the job actually on their own. So it's, it's one of those things. I, I think you can almost put it down to lack of confidence sometimes that I'm one of those plumbers that likes to double up. I never trust anything. I'm always thinking, oh, well, if that fails, I need a backup. And really speaking, a lot of the time you don't need any backup. These things work perfectly well on their own, but I suppose what it is, is that I've been out to so many leaks over the years, so many problems caused by, you know, I, that, that space shuttle that crashed, you know, with the school teacher on it, you know, that, that blew up on the, on the launch pad or just off the launch pad, if, as it were. I mean, that, I think, is seared into the memory of most people. And the reason that happened is because one O-ring failed. It, it, it got cold and cracked and, and there was a leak, I think, through a fuel. And I'm thinking, I would have put two O-rings in there. If I'd been the engineer, I would have put two O-rings in there. 
just because I think, well, if one fails, you've got another one. Just me. I'm not a rocket scientist, obviously. So that's it, that's the bathroom complete and I'm very happy with it and the customer's also delighted, which is the main thing. And it's a bathroom that's built to last because it's had that preparation, that groundwork, all those little details that you can't even see have been taken care of. So it's gonna be a bathroom which is gonna give them years of enjoyment. So if you wanna see more like this and you want some more bathroom ideas, then visit the Abacus website because they really have got a lot to tell you about.